it's Alice and welcome to this reading vlog, which is gonna be the first in my series of classics vlogs on this channel this year and we're gonna start with the first classic today and I'm really excited. The book that I have picked to be my first read is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I have never read this book, I've never read anything by Oscar Wilde and so... I'm very intrigued as to what I'm gonna think of this book. I've never really looked up a synopsis of this book. I only have like vague stuff that I've picked up along the way in my life about what this book is about, but I'm pretty sure it's about like eternal youth and a guy who, I don't know, he probably sells his soul to the devil or something. I feel like that's the way it always goes in these books. On the back here it says that this is a story of evil, debauchery and scandal and it's Oscar Wilde's only novel and tells the story of Dorian Gray, a beautiful yet corrupt man. When he wishes that a perfect portrait of himself would bear the signs of aging in his place, the picture becomes his hideous secret as it follows Dorian's own downward spiral into cruelty and depravity. The picture of Dorian Gray is a masterpiece of the evil in men's hearts and is as controversial and alluring as Wilde himself. That sounds interesting. I didn't know Wilde was particularly controversial, but maybe he is. I really don't know a lot about the author. The only thing I know of him is that I've seen some like quotes from him going around, but he was born in Ireland in 1854 and was educated in Dublin and Oxford and this book is his only novel, like I mentioned, and it was later used as evidence against Wilde at the Old Bailey in 1895 when he was tried and imprisoned for homosexual acts. Wilde died in 1900 in exile in Paris. I did know that, although I don't know if he was actually a gay man or bisexual or whatever doesn't really matter, shouldn't be imprisoned for it anyway. <laughs> this book in particular first came out in 1891 and that is all I really know. Now for classics, I always think it's interesting to talk about expectations before reading the book because some classics I have really high expectations for because they're classics and they've survived this long and then sometimes I don't have any expectations and so I feel like whether or not you have high expectations sort of dictate whether or not you're gonna get on with the book and sometimes you have really high expectations and it doesn't live up to it and so I think in each one of these vlogs I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and for this one in particular I would say I have like medium high expectations. I don't really have any expectations when it comes to the characters or the plot or like the storyline or anything like that but I have kind of high expectations for the writing because I've heard that Oscar Wilde's writing is beautiful and lyrical and so I'm expecting the writing to be like that and it'll be interesting to see if it lives up to it. I would also guess that I'm going to like this book and that I'm gonna be able to read it fairly quickly. I always read classics slower than I read other books, but this isn't like super long. It's around 230 pages-ish and so I feel like it's not gonna take me too long and I'm hoping that it's not gonna be like super slow, but you never know with classics. It'll be interesting to see if this lives up to my preconceived ideas, but there's only one way to find out and it's to start it. So I'm gonna go do that now. So it's been like two weeks, <laughs> so this project of mine is starting off really really well but I haven't been reading loads and I was reading another book that took all of my attention and it actually gave me a bit of a book hangover which it's been a while since I've had one of those. It's actually a book I have right here, it was Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell and I love this book and it just sucked me right in so I didn't really read anything else but I have finally gotten around to starting this. I've read two chapters of this now which is around 30 pages and what's happened so far is that we have met Dorian Gray so we've been introduced to him as well as a painter and one of the painter's friends and in these two chapters there's a lot of talk about sort of the value of youth and beauty and I guess Dorian Gray has never really thought about this and so he kind of panics when he realizes that 
he has it and it's something that's gonna disappear. <laughs> the painter paints this amazing portrait of Dorian Gray and when he sees it, he says something to the effect of like, oh, I wish this painting would age instead of me, which I feel like is what's gonna happen. Like, I feel like I know that from somewhere. Okay, so this is editing Alice and can we just appreciate the fact that I just said, I don't know where I got that from, but I literally read it on the back of the book like one clip ago for you, but two weeks ago for me and my goldfish brain just completely forgot. Now, I don't feel like I've gotten far enough into this to really get a good grasp of it yet, but my thoughts so far is that I'm enjoying it and I really like it. And you may notice that I have some sticky tabs in here already, and that is because the writing is really good, just like I thought it would be. And I'm really pleased with that. And it makes me excited to keep going. I've tabbed two quotes in here that I really liked. And the first one is in a part where they are discussing like the value of youth and beauty and how genius and intelligence and wisdom lasts longer. And so a lot of people chase after that because they know that beauty fades. And it says, in the wild struggle for existence, we want to have something that endures. So we fill our minds with rubbish and facts in the silly hope of keeping our place. And I just loved that quote. I thought it was a really interesting way of looking at it. And I think it's, I don't know. I just felt that quite a lot. I think a lot of people do that. And we think that being smart is somehow gonna save us when it's not. <laughs> the second quote that I really liked is just something that I think sort of touches on something that a lot of people feel and it's an important life lesson and especially as we get older I think we feel this quite a lot. It says we degenerate into hideous puppets haunted by the memory of the passions of which we were too much afraid and the exquisite temptations that we had not the courage to yield to. And I just think it sort of captures that idea of it's better to regret something that you've done instead of something that you didn't do, I guess. Side note though, I am gonna have to go get some other sticky tabs because I'm using these ones because I had them lying around and I don't like the fact that they cover parts of the text. So I know I'm being very particular, but I'm gonna have to go get I don't have to, but I'm gonna go get some transparent ones so you can read the like the text through because I don't know, this just bothers me for some reason and it's my book and I can do what I want. <laughs> so yeah, so far so good. My initial thoughts are that I really like it and I love the writing and I'm gonna keep going with this, obviously. I do think it's kind of funny though that I picked this book as my first book for this project, in part obviously because I wanted to read it, but also in part because it's a shorter book and I figured I could make my way through it relatively quickly. You can't really tell that at the pace I'm reading it, but whatever. <laughs> I feel like I just completely forgot what season it was when I got up today and got dressed because I'm like wearing a t-shirt and it's way too cold. But either way, we're gonna do a little update on this. I have been slowly and surely chipping away at it and I'm now on page 108. So I'm like around the halfway mark. We've really gotten into the story now, I feel. And what's happened is that Dorian has met a woman or She's barely a woman, she's like 17, but she's an actress and he is just like enamored with her. And spoilers ahead, I guess, if you don't know what happens in the story, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that now, so just skip ahead if you don't wanna hear it. But he gets engaged to this woman who is an actress and he's very happy, even though no one else is. Now Dorian is obviously very excited and he tells his friends, so the painter and the other guy, and he wants to bring them to the theater where she performs. And they go, and she has the worst performance of her life. It's really, really bad, no one's enjoying it, and Dorian is mortified that he brought his friends to this really bad theater performance. And he, like, these people got engaged, like, literally two seconds ago, and he goes to her and he's like, this is horrible, I don't love you anymore, you don't understand art, and this is just like nonsense. And she tries to explain why she had a bad performance, and he's just like, nah, 
don't love you anymore and he just leaves <laughs> she's heartbroken obviously because he has acted like in like a literal pile of garbage and he doesn't feel bad right away he's just like really really angry but then he goes home and he looks at the painting that we met in the earlier chapters like the amazing painting that this painter created of him he has it and he looks at it and he realizes that there is a change in the painting the dorian in the painting has this like cruel smile on his face and dorian is like he doesn't understand if he's losing his mind or if he's just like seeing things or whatever but this makes him question how he is treated this girl. When he wakes up the next day, he realizes that he's not going insane. The painting is indeed changing and that makes him feel really, really bad. And so he sort of decides that he's gonna marry this girl anyway. He doesn't really love her anymore, but he's like, I gotta do the right thing. But then his friend, which I don't think I've mentioned the name of, but his name is Lord Henry. He comes to Dorian's house and he's like, well, this isn't gonna be a problem anymore because the girl has died. It's pretty clear, they don't say it, but it's pretty clear that she's died by her own hand. And he's basically like, don't worry about it. It's not a problem anymore. <laughs> Dorian is obviously very surprised when he hears this, but these guys have a little chat and they come to the conclusion that this is probably for the best because it would have ruined Dorian's life. And Dorian sort of thinks to himself like, it's a good thing that she died. I don't remember the reason for it, but it was really stupid. And they're just like, well, this is really the best thing that could have happened for everyone because it wouldn't have worked and it would have just been really bad for Dorian, at least. <laughs> We've also gotten to read a little bit more from the perspective of the friend, Lord Henry, which is the guy that Dorian met in the beginning of the book. And they've become really good friends now. And it seems like Lord Henry is like the dominant one in the friendship and he's like influencing Dorian a lot. And he's coming up with all of these like theories about life and wisdom and it's all really weird and he influences Dorian a lot and he does it on purpose and he's sort of talking about how he's thinking about this as like a science experiment like he looks at Dorian like a science experiment and he just wants to see what's gonna happen if he influences him. He's basically just a really bad friend. He seems to me like a rich guy who's very, very bored and so he needs something to do and that's what he's decided on doing. And then, you know, we sort of read about Dorian and the painting and, you know, because his sin is showing up on the painting, the assumption is that it's not gonna show up on him. And so he thinks that what he has sort of wished for has come true, I guess. He's not completely sure, but that's the assumption. And what I'm assuming is gonna happen now is that Dorian is just gonna do whatever he wants and it's gonna show up on the painting and not on him. So he's just gonna go wild. I have tabbed some more quotes in here. There are a lot of really good quotes in this book. And I guess I can read some of my favorites to you. One that I really liked is, I think this is Lord Henry who is like bestowing his wisdom on everyone else he says when one is in love one always begins by deceiving oneself and one always ends by deceiving others i feel like i've read that quote somewhere else and i think it's it's an interesting quote i guess this whole book is written like really beautifully and there are a lot of really beautiful sentences in this book and i'm loving that i also tabbed a quote where lord henry is sort of thinking about dorian and he's thinking about his influence over him. And this is the part, like this is in the part where I was like, oh, he looks at this guy like a science experiment. It says, it was delightful to watch him with his beautiful face and his beautiful soul. He was a thing to wonder at. It was no matter how it all ended or was destined to end. He was like one of those gracious figures in a pageant or a play whose joys seem to be remote from one, but whose sorrows stirs one's sense of beauty and whose wounds are like red roses. And I sort of interpreted that as Lord Henry just wants to see what happens to this guy and he gets some sort of weird enjoyment out of it. And he seems pretty sort of hell bent on teaching this guy how to ruin his own life. <laughs> I also really like this quote which says beautiful sins like beautiful things are the privilege of the rich which I just feel like was very 
probably pretty accurate. <laughs> I'm still loving the writing and I feel like I've gotten a better grasp of the characters now and they're all kind of unlikable. And I will say I'm not as like emotionally invested in this book as maybe I thought that I would be. And I think maybe it's because the characters are the way they are, which is fine. There was one part in here where I didn't love it. It was like a chapter where we get to read from the perspective of the fiance. There's like a chapter about her and her mother and her brother. And I don't know, maybe that comes up later in the book. That's why it's there. But I felt like that was a little bit boring. I wasn't as interested in that. I get why it's there, I think, but I didn't love that part. I much more prefer reading about like Dorian and Lord Henry and the painter, who's kind of just there in the background. So mostly just Dorian and the the guy, the friend, Lord Henry. I am really excited to keep going with this though, and I'm very intrigued to see what's gonna happen with the painting and all of that. And I think I'm gonna sit down now and read like a good chunk in this. For me, I am enjoying this more when I read like several chapters at once and not just like a little bit here and there, because I feel like I need a little bit of time to like get into the story and just, it's nice to stay there for a little while. So, you know, I have about half the book left. We'll see how long it takes me to read, but I'm gonna go read a little bit now. I've finished the book now and um, I have a lot of thoughts. This was just a very interesting book and a lot has happened since I spoke to you last and I'll just summarize it very quickly but what happens is that Dorian is given a book by Lord Henry and this book has a tremendous effect on him and he basically spends the next 18 years just doing whatever the hell he wants and <laughs> we learn that he leaves a lot of people sort of destroyed in his wake he ruins a lot of people's lives and people know about it like people talk about it but people still like him and it seems like they like him because he's still beautiful, like he has kept his youth. And while all of this is happening, the painting is growing more and more hideous by the day because the painting is showing all of his sins, I guess. And Dorian also becomes more and more obsessed with the painting and he... There's a part where it says like he doesn't like staying away from it for too long, so he eventually like stops traveling and stuff because he wants to be near the painting and doesn't want to be like away from it for long periods of time. He does actually end up showing the painting though to someone. He shows it to the painter who painted the painting. How many times can you say painting and painter in a sentence? But he shows the painting to the painter because he like drops by and he really wants to see it and it doesn't go very well. He sees the painting and he's like, oh my god, it's hideous. And Dorian, you know, I think I sort of get that situation. It was very interesting because Dorian is basically showing this guy his soul and he knows that it's ugly, but there is something to having someone else look at it and be like, oh my god, it's hideous. And to sort of judge it in a way, and he feels like this makes him very angry, like the painter's reaction. And so he kills him. <laughs> then, the brother of the girl who died, I'm summarizing all of this very quickly, but the brother of that girl starts chasing after him. He's like wanted to kill him ever since his sister died, and he suddenly gets wind that Dorian is the guy, because he didn't know. And he like chases after him and Dorian freaks out, but then the guy, the brother, is accidentally killed and so he is safe once again and he basically just gets away with everything. <laughs> At the end of the book though, Dorian is like weighed down by his life and everything that he's done and everything that he's experienced and he decides that it's all too much and he wants to be good. And Lord Henry like laughs this off because he is the worst, but I also kind of get it. <laughs> but Dorian says that he has done this good deed. He met this girl and they like had a bit of a romance thing, but he decided to not ruin her. So he basically had the opportunity to do something bad and he decided to not do it, which he feels is a good deed, which you can discuss 
is maybe not because like you're not supposed to do bad things at all but whatever he does this good deed in his opinion and he goes to the painting in the hopes that this will show up on the painting that it will have had an effect like this one small thing will have had an effect on this like past of 18 years or more of doing horrible things and he looks at the painting and there is no difference and he gets really really frustrated so he stabs the painting and dies that's the end of the book and i feel like now the chapter with the girl makes a lot more sense to me like i think i mentioned that i didn't really get on with it or i didn't love it but i also thought that maybe there was a reason it was there i get that reason now and so I get why it's there. I will say though, there was a part in the middle here that I felt like was such a slog. Like there's one chapter where we basically just, I don't even remember what it was about, but it was about like Dorian's life and the things that he did. And it was such a slog. And so for a few chapters there, I feel like things were really slowed down and it was, yeah, it was just a bit slow for a few chapters here. It really does pick up towards the end though, like I mentioned, but I really liked the ending. I feel like it suited the story well, like the part where Dorian is thinking about his whole life and ends up, you know, stabbing the painting and in turn sort of stabbing himself because they find him with like a knife in his heart or something. And he's grown old when they find him, so they don't really even recognize him because suddenly he looks like the painting and the painting looks like it did back in the day. And I feel like it was the perfect ending to this book. Now I thought for these vlogs, we could use a slightly more complicated rating system and sort of take a look at the different aspects of the book and rate the different aspects to get a more comprehensive review, I guess. So my thinking is that I will rate the writing, the atmosphere, the characters, the plot, the pacing, and my enjoyment level of the book because those things usually differ quite a bit and I think that that could be a more interesting way of sort of reviewing the book if you will. If you've read the book along with me though I would love to know your different ratings for the different things and just your thoughts in general of course but like how you would rate the different aspects of the book. So the writing for me is five out of five stars. I absolutely loved it. It's lyrical and descriptive and vivid and sometimes a bit absurd, yes, but for me it worked really well and it's probably my favorite thing about this book. The characters I would give four out of five. I think that the main characters are really interesting and complex, but most if not all of the side characters are completely one dimensional, which I sort of get for such a short book, but there it is. The plot, I think I would probably give five out of five stars actually which i'm a bit surprised by but i feel like you know it is more of a character driven novel but the plot that is there is really cool and interesting my only sort of gripe with it is that <laughs> the part with the painting like the painting aging instead of dorian that is never really explained or explored that much like there is a part of me that is a little annoyed that the only thing is just like Dorian says a sentence out loud and then it just happens and that's kind of it. But I also feel like that's not the important part of the story necessarily and so I sort of understand why it wasn't explained. So overall I think the plot for me was very very good. The pacing for me I think is somewhere between like three and four stars. I find it very difficult to sort of judge the pacing of this for some reason. I just felt like the middle part was so slow and I understand why it was there and it sort of it sort of needed to be there but maybe it didn't need to be that long and I think that the first third of the book is really good and then there's like a really slow part in the middle and then the last third is again really good so yeah I think I would give the pacing like maybe three stars. There was a bit in here that just didn't really work for me. And for such a short book, I'm surprised by how long that part of the book felt. I think I would rate my enjoyment level of this at like a four out of five, which is actually pretty high. And I do think it's a very interesting story. And I really liked the discussions 
about art and beauty and youth and what's worth pursuing in life and the cost of the things that we do. And it's just a very clever story. And I think the only thing that's missing for me is actually deeply caring about the people in the book. I think for me, this felt a little bit like something interesting that you're looking at from afar, but you're not actually in it. So you're not as invested as maybe you could have been. In conclusion, I think that my overall rating would be like four out of five stars, which is really good. And I feel like the book lived up to my expectations quite well, but it didn't surprise me all that much. I loved the writing just like I thought I would and the story was interesting just like I thought it would be. I think the only thing that was different was how slow it was in parts. Like that was the only thing that maybe I wasn't expecting. But overall, I feel like it did quite well when it came to my expectations of it. Now, I have also looked at some reviews of this book on Goodreads, which is something that I do for almost every book that I read after I've finished it. I really like reading other people's thoughts on the books that I read. And usually I will read like a little bit of all kinds of reviews. But for this, I looked at the really highly rated reviews and some of the really low rated reviews. The good reviews pretty much agreed with me and what I've just said. And the bad reviews complained about how the writing is like too descriptive and too flowery, that the story was boring and slow and that the characters were really unlikable. And I totally see that. I see that this book is not for everyone. And if you don't like reading about unlikable characters and sort of unredeemable characters in a lot of ways, and you don't like really descriptive language, this probably isn't for you. Having finished this though, it means it's time to move on to my next classic, which is gonna be the subject of my next classics vlog. My Patreons, picked this one for me and I'm really, really excited about it. And I think a lot of you are gonna be excited about it as well because a lot of you commented that you really wanted to see me read this book and maybe read it along with me. And it is Emma by Jane Austen. I'm really looking forward to starting this and I hope some of you will read it along with me. And I'm gonna start this book today and start the vlog today as well. So keep your eyes peeled for that, but yeah. That was it for this vlog. I would love to know your thoughts on the picture of Dorian Gray, whether you read it ages ago or if you read it along with me. Let me know all of your thoughts and that was it for the very first classics vlog. As usual, links to my Patreon and other social media will be in the description if you're interested and I will see you soon. Bye.